Let's go through the steps necessary to tune your Vic first snare drum. Now even if you don't have a snare drum at this point, watch this and use this as a reference because eventually you'll have a drum and need to tune it. Let's go through the parts to describe every part of the drum so you know what I'm talking about during the tuning process. On the top head, we call this the batter head because it's the one we beat on. The bottom head underneath the snare drum is called the snare head or the bottom head. The snare head is a very thin piece of mylar, so we've got to take extra special care with this head to make sure we do not break it. It breaks very easily, so never play on the bottom head. Running across the snare head are the snares. These pieces of wire or cable or gut is what gives the snare drum its distinctive sound. When we hit the drum, it causes these wires to vibrate or rattle. We tune the drum with the tension rods. Those are those little screws that go all the way around the drum that allow us to tighten the drum head. We tighten the drum head with the counter hoops. The counter hoops are rims, is what you're going to hear me call it a lot of times. It's what sits on the drum head and basically pushes it in when we tighten those tension rods. Those tension rods go into the tension casing. On a snare drum, snare drums always have a mechanism to turn the snares off and on. This mechanism is called the snare strainer. With the Vic Firth kit, it moves basically up and down. So I can turn the snares off, which means I don't have that rattle, or I can turn them on where I have the rattle sound. Different mechanisms work differently. Some go side to side. This one's very simple. Just goes back and forth. The final thing that you'll see on a Vic First snare drum that might not be on every snare drum, but is called an internal muffler. This screw right here basically enacts a pad that pushes up against the top head to keep the head from ringing. We'll talk about that later as we get into tuning. Now that you know all the parts of the drum, let's start off by grabbing our drum key from our drum kit and learning how to tune the drum. Hope you got your drum key. Now, First step, if you got a brand new drum, and I have all of my students bring in their drums so that we can do this together, is to take your drum key and loosen up all the tension rods. Loosen those up until they're all the way off. What we need to do, if you, especially if you have an old drum that you got either from a, on sale on the one ads or your grandfather or something like that, is you need to pull the tension rods off and give them a good cleaning. Sometimes these are so gunked up that you'll need to soak them in dishwashing liquid for a while and, and get an old towel or paper towel and clean those off because they'll have a lot of gunk on them. If you've got a really old drum, you might even take off the, the counter hoop and the head and clean out the inside because it might be full of dust or whatever. On a brand new drum, you're really in pretty good shape, but what you need to do is lubricate those tension rods. And the way I do that is to take one little bitty drop of Vaseline petroleum jelly and I just put just a tad at the end of my tension rod then feed it back through and screw it into the tension casing and that will lubricate your tension rods then we want to make sure that the head is seated what you're going to do when you seat the drum head is to put your palm flat in the center of the head and press down slightly Okay? You don't have to put all your weight on it, just enough to make sure that the head is in contact with the shell all the way around. Then go around the drum, make sure that all of those tension rods are finger tight. That way we're starting in the same place from every single tension rod. Now you can get really uh, detailed about it and take a ruler and measure each tension rod to make sure you're starting at the same point. I don't really do that, but you can do that if you'd like. Now to tune the drum. Steps you're going to use is what I call a crisscross method, or we call this tuning in opposites. Basically, I'm going to start with a tension rod directly across from me, and I'm going to turn the drum key one half turn. Then, instead of just going around clockwise, I go to the opposite tension rod. Tune that a half turn. Two o'clock, half turn. Seven o'clock, half turn. Basically, working your way around the drum in a crisscross method. Now, 
If you're starting from scratch and you started everything finger tight, you're going to go around the drum three times and that's going to basically put you in the right pitch range for what the drum needs to sound like. So crisscross every single time you work your way all the way around, do it three times with direct half turns. Don't do a full turn because that's, that will crank too much on each tension rod. So one half turn all the way around the drum using crisscross and you'll be pretty much set for the next step. After you've gone around the drum three times, we're pretty much in the pitch range, but you might want to check your drum might be a little bit different than this one. Press on the center of the head to see if, they're, if it's pretty firm. We, we don't want it to be so solid that it won't give it all, but at the same time, we want to make sure it's fairly tight, so that way when we start doing our bounces and our rolls, the drum is going to respond correctly. If you need to tighten it again, I suggest doing quarter turns in the crisscross method all the way around the drum. Now you're ready to fine tune the drum and this takes a lot of time to develop the skills to do this but hey like anything else it's good to go ahead and start now and develop your ear. What we're doing here is we're trying to get the head in tune with itself. In other words at each point where there's a tension rod the head will produce a pitch. So what we want to do is start off with your drumstick and start with a tension rod about two inches in from the drum head and tap on that drum head lightly. What I'm doing is I'm listening for a pitch of that drum head. Now it might help to say that I've got my drum sitting on a something that's solid that will stop the bottom head from ringing so I can isolate just the sound of the top head. But two inches in, listen for that pitch. Now I'm going to go to the opposite tension rod two inches in and listen for that pitch. Now I won't lie to you, I made this very obvious so that you could hear a difference in pitch. Listen to the difference in pitch from this lug to this lug. Hopefully you can hear that this tension rod is much higher, the head is much higher on this tension rod than on this tension rod. So the step that we do with the fine tuning is to raise the pitch of the low tension rod to match the pitch of the high tension rod. It takes a lot of patience to fine tune your drum but it's very much worth the effort. So if you're using this tension rod as your reference point, basically I'm making sure that every tension rod is exactly matched to it. Okay, so I've got a little bit of work to do, but what I'm trying to do is make the head in tune with itself and that way it will have its full resonance. Okay, changing a bottom head is a royal pain. I can't lie to you, I hate doing it. But we break so many bottom heads because they're thin that you have to know how to do this. If all you're doing is tuning the bottom head, go through all of those same steps that we applied to the top head and do that and leave everything else alone. If you have never done this before and you're a little uh, apprehensive about it, you might consider taking your drum to your local music store and letting them change the bottom head for you. Bottom heads are pretty cheap, so don't just play on a snare drum with a broken head. Okay? So the first step to changing a bottom head is to detach the snares. And the way I do that is with these strings on the snare strainer. Basically, Take a look at how these strings are attached here, how they curl around, because we're going to repeat those steps when we put that back on. So essentially all I do is pull those strings out of the snare strainer and I've got my snares detached from the bottom head. Now once I have my snares detached, basically I can change my entire bottom head by taking off all of those tension rods, pulling that out. Inspect your snares. Make sure that if you've got an older kit, make sure all of these are very smooth and even. If you've got wires that are bent up, you're not ever going to make your snares sound great. So it's easy to replace those snares. All you got to do is go buy a new set, put them on there. Now, I won't go through all of those steps because we don't have time on the video, but suffice it to say that putting on the head and tuning it is very important. Then you want to take your strings, feed it through the snare gate, and basically retrace your steps to connect the snares. 
At this point, I always like to look at my snares to make sure they're centered on the bottom head. Sometimes, because somebody will mess with it, they'll get off center just a little bit. The snares might not <clears throat> might be hanging off of one end. So we want to make sure that the snares are centered. Now on some drums they use a piece of plastic here instead of the string, but on the Vic Firth kit they use this string. If you ever have to replace a string, it's really important that you get a nylon string to replace it. Something like a shoestring or anything that's made of cotton will not work because it stretches. So it has to be a real sturdy nylon string. With the Vic Firth kit, all I do here is I thread the strings through the two plates of my snare strainer. I wrap those back around and tighten up the tension screws. And I turn on my snare drum. They should be fairly snug against there. So if they're not, I might need to adjust that slightly. The next step in the process of tuning your drum is to adjust the tension on the snares. We do that with the adjustment screw on the snare strainer. Basically what we're trying to do is to make the snares rattle just enough to sound like a snare drum but not rattle too long. So if you listen to this drum, the snares are rattling forever. Definitely not the sound that I want to hear. So I'm going to adjust my tension on the snare strainer. to tighten up those snares. Don't over tighten because we don't want a choked off sound. The last step in the process is to put some muffling, a little bit of muffling on the snare drum to basically take out the ring. So with the tension screw on the internal muffler, all I'm gonna do is tune it enough that that pad barely touches the top head. You can hear the difference between no muffling and now I'm gonna put a little bit of muffling on that. Okay? We don't want to over muffle any drum because it loses its natural resonance. We don't want to put so much on it that it sounds like a cardboard box. Otherwise, get a cardboard box. <laughs> so here is a great sounding snare drum. Next, we're going to learn how to grip the sticks and produce the stroke.